All right, let's look at a couple of ways to drill holes in an organic object, possibly with a subdivision surface modifier. It doesn't even have to be organic, just a bent object. And uh, I'm going to show you a few ways to do this, but all of these ways are done without uh, a Boolean modifier. Okay, so this should be pretty non-destructive if you can say that for something like this, right? I'll show you over here the topology of these holes that we have over here. It's pretty good, so we don't have any topological issues or anything like that, right? So we're going to look at our second object over here where we can demonstrate how this is going to happen. Now, we made another video where we talked about how to make holes in organic objects like this, but the problem was that that video only applies to objects which don't have very bent surfaces. The surface has to be pretty flat for this to work. Once it's bent, it's not going to work very well, right? So today we're going to talk about how we can do that on a surface which is bent or bumpy or round, like this sur surface over here, that we have a sort of hill. So we have this little shape with a subdivision surface modifier, as you can see over here. So the first method that I want to show you is uh, it's going to be pretty similar to the one that we talked about in the last video, but it's going to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit improved, a little bit more uh, appropriate for a bumpy surface like this, right? So let's say over here we want to have a hole over here on this kind of surface, right? So we have these four planes or these four uh, faces that we have over here, and we want to turn those into a hole, right? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to select the four faces and we're going to inset them like this until they have a little shape pushing, in, uh, pushing them inwards, sort of, right? And then we have to turn this into a hole, because if we just extrude this downwards, well, it's a hole, but it's not very circular, right? So we have to turn it into a circular hole is what I tried to say, right? So the best way to do this is if we go into top view, we basically just have to align these uh, into a circle, right? We have to align them so they're pretty much close to a perfect circle, all right? Uh, but this is the manual way to do it. This is the fir first way to do it. I wouldn't say it's the most efficient, but it might work for you in some cases, right? So I'm going to show you how to do that, right? The first thing we have to do to do this is to just add uh, a... Uh, a circle which is going to have the same number of vertices as this shape that we have over here. So if we delete the inner vertex, we need to have the same number of uh, vertices in the in circle that we create as we have over here. Right? So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vertices over here, which means we're going to create a circle separately with eight vertices. All right, and we can just kind of align that so it has the right angle, so it goes from th this vertex to this vertex, as if the line would go through there somewhere. But it doesn't really matter too much. Now this is our sort of reference. This is a, almost like a blueprint, right? Because all we have to do now is we have to align uh, these uh, faces or align these vertices with the vertices of the circle, right? And we can just do that by sliding some faces in edit mode or sliding some vertices in edit mode. For example, we can take this vertex and just slide it around and slide it into place so it matches this vertex uh, reasonably well, right? And then we do that with the next one over here, okay, like this. And then we can just take the one over here. As you can see, this process will work, but it is quite slow and it is pretty manual and it is pretty prone to error, right? So. I'm going to show you the results of what happens when we align all the faces and when we finish this. And then this is reasonably well. You can adjust it a little bit more, but this is this is reasonably good, right? So if we delete this circle now on top, you can see we have a pretty circular hole. And if we look at it from top view, it's almost a perfect circle, or it, at least it looks like a perfect circle, right? So now we can just take this, uh, we can just take this uh, edge loop that we have over here, extrude that, and push it downwards, and now we have a perfectly circular hole. Uh, in this object, right? So if we shade that smooth, you can see that it's a pretty good hole uh, for this object, right? And we didn't have to use any Boolean, so we didn't have to mess up the geometry in any weird way or anything like that, right? Now you can also use this method if you have less if you have less uh, vertices. Maybe you want to have only six vertices, so you can just do the same thing. Inset two faces, and they're going to turn into six vertices, right? Like this. And then if we delete those faces, again, we can just do the same thing, but this time we would, of course, use... Uh, a circle with six vertices instead of eight, right? So we can just place that uh, over there. And then uh, one, one more time, we can just adjust these in, uh, uh, individual vertices so that they match the six uh, or the hexagon, which is above them, right? And again, once we do that, we can just extrude that downwards. And we have the same thing over here, but just with less vertices. So it's a little bit easier with, uh, with only six vertices, right? With a hexagon, which is made out of only two faces, it's a little bit easier. But of course, if you have more faces, it's going to be more... Uh, it's going to be higher in, in uh, its polygons and it's going to be smoother and it's going to look a little bit more realistic possibly, right? But it's easier with six vertices. Now the final and probably the most important technique that I have to show you here, or the second technique, I didn't show you that many yet, but that's going to be once we already have the subdivision surface modifier applied, all right? So let's look at an example over here. We have, uh, we applied our subdivision surface modifier and now we have this very uh, kind of high poly almost a grid pattern over here on this surface, right? So we can't just do eight, six or eight vertices anymore. It's not going to work the same way, right? Now we have a larger area. So let's say we want to cut a hole and we want to have it approximately like over this area, right? Let's say we want to have that, but we want it to be a circular hole, right? 
So the best way to do that is we select a, a surface like this. So you select one face and then Control Shift and select another face. So it's going Blender is going to select all the faces between those two faces, right? So we have a little area, a little square selected. Now, ideally, we want to have a surface which is such that it's only made of squares or shapes which are somewhat close to squares and not very long rectangles like this, right? This is going to work as well, but we want to, it's preferable. It's going to work a little bit better if you have squares. So if you can do that, try to make only squares. Maybe you can just add a couple of loop cuts somewhere like this, all right, without you know, without causing too many shading issues and then may, maybe to smooth them out, you can just use some loop tools and just kind of relax these edges a little bit, right, as you can see over here. But anyway, let's take a couple of these squares and let's select a surface and maybe we'll try to make it so that we have a square of one, two, three, four, five faces over here and six over here. So we're going to select a couple more. So I have a six... Uh, six faces over here and six faces over here, right? And again, we're just going to inset that a little bit with I, right? Now, we have to find out how many vertices we have going in this circle again, the same way we did before, right? But don't worry, we're not going to do this manually, all right? We're not going to manually align each vertex. So we have to find out how many uh, vertices we have here, okay? So we can delete these faces inside. And when we select this, we can go up here uh, to this little viewport overlays menu, and we can just check statistics. That's going to show you some interesting facts about your, your 3D model or your workspace over here. For example, we can see that in total we have 1,078 vertices. But if we select this, we have selected 24 out of 1,078 vertices, right? So that means that this circle, this loop over here, this square, not a circle yet, it has 24 vertices, which is all the information we need, all right? So we're going to disable this statistics thing, and we're going to undo a couple of steps until we get this face back, all right? Because we need this to be a full surface, right? So now we're going to go to top view again, and we're going to add another circle over here, this time, of course, with 24 vertices. And I'm going to show you how we can now align this hole with, uh, with this circle to make it a perfectly circular hole without doing it manually by hand. Because if we did it manually, there's just too many vertices. It's not going to work too well, right? So we're going to fill this shape in. We're going to lift it up a little bit. And let's get rid of the shape in the back over there. And we're going to go to our modifiers uh, when we have this circle selected, and we're going to add a shrink wrap modifier. And now once we added the shrink wrap modifier, we want to set the target to the object that we have below. And the object below us is named cube, right? So we're going to set the target to cube. And we're going to set the wrap method to project, right? And now you see nothing happens immediately. But if we pull this shape down, it is going to kind of get glued onto the surface below it, right? As if it falls like a sort of fabric on top of the surface. But from top view, it remains... It keeps its shape of almost a perfect circle, right? So we can maybe just push that down a little bit more if we have to, but I think it's just fine, right? Don't worry about the face in the middle getting all torn up because that doesn't matter. We're going to delete that face. It's going to be a hole, right? All you have to do now is uh, apply this shrink wrap modifier to the face, and uh, we're going to join these two objects together, right? So when we join those two objects together, we can just delete all the faces on the inside again, and we can select this outer edge loop, and we can select the inner edge loop, and we can just bridge those edge loops together, right? So we select those two edge loops, W and bridge edge loops. Maybe you might need a, your uh, edge loop, uh, your loop tools mod uh, add-on for this. So just go up here to your preferences and type in loop tools. Loop tools and just check this. It's a lot of useful tools. We can make another tutorial if you're interested in how to use that tool correctly. But we bridge those two edge loops and it, it's only going to work well if we have the same amount of uh, edges on both loops, right? But we remember that we had 24 on this. We measured that. And we also added a circle with 24 edges. So if we join those together, if we bridge them, it's gonna it's gonna join them pretty well, all right. So now we can just extrude this downwards, all right. Delete the face. We're gonna we have already have some smooth shading, so we just if we just add some auto smooth, uh, you can see that we have a pretty good sharp hole in, in this edge, and the topology is pretty good, and there aren't really any shading issues or anything like that. So this is gonna give us a pretty good hole uh, in our shape, right? And guys, if you want to learn more about my methods, I have a book, and I'll leave a link for that in the description.